news. It's me. Yeah, I'm seated again. I fear we needed to have a little bit of a sit down. It's not that kind of talk, but... Um, so... One of the things that I find important as a, a writer and something that, that I, 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 I talk with other writers a lot about is, is the, the writer's voice. And I, you and I have discussed this ad nauseum. I understand that. Um, but something sort of came to light recently and, and I wanted to talk to you about it. Directly, Muse, you. That's right. Ah, uh, so <laughs> I don't. I don't want this to come off the wrong way, because in this day and age, things are so easily misinterpreted and misrepresented. So, but anyway, I went through a period where I was I was trying to find a new book to read, and I, I found myself getting a chapter into a book and putting it aside because it didn't capture my attention. And that happened quite a number of times. And I, I, I had to, I, I finally stepped back and I, I asked myself, why? Why is this happening to me? Why am I having trouble finding an interesting book to read? Because I know that there are hundreds of thousands of them out there. That may be an exaggeration. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know the actual numbers. I have no scientific research to prove or disprove that number. But I stepped back and I, I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And, and I realized what I was, the problem I was having with these books was that they all started sounding the same. That it, it could have been, for whatever reason, it could have been that the same author had written all of these books that I had just tried to to read and these were all fiction so one would think that you pick up a book and it would be a completely different world to devour and so I've real what I realized was that and, and again I, I, I'm, I'm trying I'm trying not to be presumptuous here but I realized it seemed that those books were all written with this sort of kind of drab, innocuous, beige kind of voice. And it did, they didn't grab my attention. And, and this is just my own particular opinion, my own tastes. Uh, because I like words. And, and I like I like the rhythm of words. I like the way that the different words fit together and the, the interplay between them and, and the play between sentences and, and the, the way a good author can structure something such that it, it has this melody and rhythm to it. And that's important to me as a writer. And I know that there are so many different schools of thought. There are, there are schools of thought wherein... It is important that the author's voice do not get in the way of telling a story. And that's true. I, I, I think that the story needs to be elevated. But the story can be elevated at, while at the same time there being this, this wonderful sense of, 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 of this, this blending of poetry and, and prose. And... I find that a lack thereof gets in the way of me enjoying a book. I mean, think about, you know, it, it's, <laughs> I feel like I'm really putting my foot in my mouth here, Muse, but uh, if, if we applied it to music, what we would have would be a bunch of bands that all sound the same. It's like every Nickelback song sounds exactly the same. And we don't want that. We want to, I want to be able to go over to my turntable and put on an album and it sound completely different from the album I just listened to. I, I want every aspect of that album to be different. And I think that that's crucial to artists. 
Because we have our voice and it needs to be heard. And so I, I, I want to I ask you, am I serving your stories with a voice that's worthy of being read? With an artistic voice that's worthy of being read? And I think that's one of the things that we forget as writers is that, that we are artists and we need to apply a certain level of artistry to our work. All the while, that artistry cannot get in the way of telling a good story. You know, I like when a narrator, the narrating voice of a book, has a personality. Not so much so that it gets in the way of the personality of the characters because it becomes a big wash. But just enough personality. And generally speaking, the personality is going to reflect the personality of the writer. And I like to think that every artist out there has a, has a personality that they can share with the world. And, and I like to think, and I th this is important to me, I'd like to think that when a reader has read enough of my books, they should feel like they know me. Does that make sense? That through the narration of a book, a, a reader who has never met me can, can stand with me and have a conversation and feel like they know me. Feel like they've known me for a long time. And I think that's important. Because I do want to give away a little bit of me in my books. And I, I think that that's one of the things a long time ago uh, when I, I, I asked my wife why she didn't read my books, her first and most honest answer was that, that she hears me all the time. And reading my books is just like hearing me talk. So it, when she said that, I, it, it was a verification for me that that my personality was coming through in my books, which means my writer's voice was strong. And, and I think that's something that some schools of thought would say to avoid. And I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm saying that's wrong for me. But I hope that over the years that I have developed a voice strong enough to stand up to your stories because I know your the, the, the ideas that you give me are amazing. And I, I just hope I'm doing them justice with my voice. I really hope that doesn't come off pretentious because I'm not pretentious. That's what I got, Muse. I'll let you think about it. And you come back to me on this rather touchy subject. But, you know, I mean, we do what we do, and we do it in the way we do it. <laughs> I sound, I sound, that sounds like a, a, a basketball or football coach. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll do me, you do you. And we'll get to Scotland at the same damn time. Anyway, thanks, Muse. Thank you for the ideas. Uh, I'm waiting for more. Hit me. Hit me with your best shot.